In this video, we will draw these vectors and we will calculate their magnitude and direction. Let's start with uh, vector u. Standard position means we're going to start from the origin as we draw the vector. Uh, with coordinates negative 3 comma negative 4, well components rather, negative 3, negative 4, that means this vector should go left 3 and then down 4 starting from the origin. I'm going to use the draw arrow tool to do this. So starting from the origin, if I go uh, left 3 and down 4, that's going to put me right about here. And uh, I'll go ahead and make this one blue. So here is a sketch of vector u. Now let's slide over and sketch vector v. Uh, this one should be right 2 and down 8. Again, I'm going to use my draw arrow tool. So if I go right 2 and then down, that's 3, 6, 8. I'm going to be about here. And I'll make this one red or pink. So there's vector V. Okay, now we need to calculate the magnitude of vector u. That's what this notation means. And uh, the magnitude is just going to be the square root of, and uh, let's see, so remember we had negative 3 and negative 4 for the components. So we will do negative 3 squared plus negative 4 squared. Um, so that means the magnitude is going to be the square root of 9 plus 16 Um, so that's going to be the square root of 25, which of course means the magnitude of vector u is 5. Similarly, let's calculate the magnitude of vector v. Now this one is 2 uh, comma negative 8. So we will do the square root of 2 squared plus negative 8 squared. Uh, so that's going to equal the square root of 4 plus 64. That's the square root of 68. Um, so this is going to be 4 times all right so that's going to be uh, 2 root 17. So that is the magnitude of vector v. All right, now for number five, we are supposed to uh, approximate the direction of vector u in degrees. Now, because vector u is not in the first quadrant, we need to start off by uh, finding this reference angle and uh, I'm gonna call this angle R for reference angle. Um, now, actually I need to move this R out of the way for a second. I'll put it here. So we're gonna find this. Uh, but the components, remember we have, uh, this is negative three and this is negative four. Uh, based on this right triangle, we could say that the tangent of R is equal to negative 4 over negative 3. Uh, therefore, r will equal the inverse tangent of, and I'll just go ahead and say 4 over 3, because, you know, a negative divided by a negative is a positive. Um, but here you go. All right, so we'll do the inverse tangent of 4 over 3. Um, I'm pretty sure this is in radians. So, side note, make sure your calculator is in degree mode as you're doing this. Um, so, let me switch this over to degrees and let's try that again. So, let's see, inverse tangent of 4 over 3. 
All right, that's better, 53.13 degrees. All right, now that is the reference angle, 53.13 degrees. If we want the actual angle uh, as measured from the positive x-axis that goes all the way around, we're going to have to add an extra 180 degrees to this. Um, so if I take this and I add 180 degrees, um, that's going to give me 233.13 degrees. Okay, now for number six, we're supposed to approximate the direction of angle V. So let's go back and take a look at angle V. So again, I'm going to have to start by calculating this reference angle that is right here. Now, uh, we have these components, okay, that go like this. Maybe I made this. Let me try that again. Uh, we have this is 2, and this component is negative 8. So, w looking at that triangle, looking at this reference angle, I could say that the tangent of the reference angle uh, is equal to negative 8 over 2. So that means that the reference angle is going to equal the inverse tangent of, and I'll just go ahead and say negative 4. Uh, you know, negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. Okay, so let's see what the calculator says about that. So we will do the inverse tangent of negative 4. Okay, so it's telling me uh, negative 75.96. Okay, and the negative just means it's uh, you know, measured clockwise. Um, but basically, uh, just look at the 75.96. So the reference angle, we'll just say 75.96 degrees. Now, if I want the actual angle uh, that goes like this from the positive x-axis all the way around counterclockwise, all right, that's the actual position. Um, the best thing for me to do is start with 360 degrees and then subtract the reference angle. So 360 minus 75.96. Hey Siri, 360 minus 75.96. 360 minus 75.96 is 284.04. 284.04 degrees. So that is the uh, direction of vector v. For number seven, we have some vector operations and sketches to do, starting with u plus v. So uh, algebraically, if we add these two vectors, we're just going to add the corresponding components. So uh, I'm adding negative 3 and 2. I'm going to get negative 1. Uh, negative 4 and negative 8 make negative 12. All right, so this is the resultant vector, u plus v. Uh, now let's do the sketches. Now let's add these graphically. So uh, I'm going to show vector u in blue and vector v in red. So uh, here's a drawing of vector u and vector v, both in standard position. If I want to add these, I need to put them head to tail. So um, I'll start with vector u. Uh, and then if I want to find the resultant vector, I need to put vector v on the end. 
Now this is a little bit tricky because it's going off the graph, uh, but we will do our best and estimate. So now the resultant vector, the sum, will go from the beginning of the pair to the end of the pair. So I'm going to draw it from here all the way to here. There's my resultant vector. Um, I like to show these in green for some reason. Um, so this green vector will be my resultant vector. Notice that it seems to go left 1 and down something beyond negative 10. I would estimate it to be a negative 12. So negative 1 and negative 12. And if we look back at our algebraic calculations, it matches. Uh, go ahead and label your vectors like this. Okay, now let's uh, go back and take a look at the next problem. U minus V. So one way to handle uh, U minus V is to understand that this is going to be the same thing as uh, vector U plus negative V. So this is a, an easy way to do the subtraction of two vectors. So um, look, vector u was negative 3 comma negative 4. So I've got negative 3 comma negative 4. OK. And then now I'm going to put negative vector v, or the opposite of vector v. So vector v was 2 comma negative 8. So I'm going to put negative 2 comma 8 negative 2 comma 8 alright because that is the opposite of vector v so algebraically uh, this is one way that you can go ahead and make this happen so negative 3 and negative 2 that's going to be negative 5 negative 4 and 8 that's going to be 4 alright so that is the vector u minus v uh, now, graphically, there are two ways to do this. One way is to draw these two vectors, u and negative v. So here's vector u in blue and vector negative v in purple. Um, so if I add these, again, I can just put them head to tail like this. Now um, my resultant vector I will draw from the beginning of the pair to the end of the pair. So I will draw it from here to here and this should be the resultant. Alright, so and this seems to be left 5 and up 4 so that matches what we got algebraically. So this is one way to graphically subtract u minus v. Uh, now I'm going to show you another way. In this method, I will not do the opposite of vector v. I will use the actual vector v. So um, here is the graph of vector u, shown here in blue, and vector v, shown in red. Um, so for this method, go ahead and keep both vectors in standard position. Um, the, the resultant vector is going to stretch across the ends of these two vectors. The only thing you have to watch out for is the order. Am I going to uh, draw the resultant from uh, vector u to vector v? or do I draw it from vector v to vector u? The order matters. And um, the truth is, it's the opposite of the way it's written. So uh, if I'm going to do vector u minus v, then when I draw it, when I draw this, I'm going to draw it from vector v to vector u. All right, so you reverse the order in which you draw it. So uh, as I draw the resultant, um, this is vector u, this is vector v. 
but I'm going to draw it from the end of vector v to the end of vector u. And this is another way of finding uh, the difference of two vectors. Okay, now I kept our answer from uh, the first method that we used. I just dragged it off to the side and I just wanted to show you that either way you're getting the exact same answer. Go ahead and label your diagram like this, vector u, vector v, vector u minus v. For number eight, we're going to find each resultant vector in component form. We're just going to do some scalar multiplication and some addition. So if I want to do three times vector u, um, I'm going to set it up like this, and I'm just going to multiply each of the components by three. So that's why I'm going to get uh, negative 9 comma negative 12. That is vec three, vector 3u. Three um, the vector negative 2v, similarly, I'm just going to multiply the components. So that's going to be negative 4 comma positive 16. This is the vector negative 2v. Um, for this one, I need to do u plus 2v. So here's vector u plus 2 times vector v. So for the moment, I will keep vector u the same. And I will go ahead and multiply by 2. So I'm going to get 4 comma negative 16. Now I will add the corresponding components. So I'm going to get 1 comma negative 20. All right, that is the resultant vector here. And then for this one, I'm going to multiply by 3, and then I will multiply by negative 5. You know what, I think I'm, I'm really, I'm going to go ahead and look at this as 3 times uh, negative 3, negative 4, plus negative 5 times 2, comma, negative 8. All right, this is really what I'm about to do. So this is going to give me negative 9 comma negative 12. All right, and then plus negative 10 comma positive 40. So now I can just add the corresponding components. So that will give me negative 19 comma 28. All right, and that is the resultant vector here. So for number nine, we're supposed to sketch vector a, five comma one, with, a, uh, with an initial point of negative six comma four. All righty then. So an initial point of negative six comma four, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four. So here is our initial point. Now, as we sketch the vector, from the initial point, it should go right 5 and up 1. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and up 1. So, now there's a couple questions off to the side. What is the terminal point? Well, the terminal point is this point right here. That's the point negative 1, comma, 5. Now, what is the magnitude? Well, uh, we can get the magnitude just by using the, comp the components of the vector. The magnitude of vector A, which we could denote this way, it's just going to equal the square root of 5 squared plus 1 squared. I'm just using the components. So that's going to be the square root of 25 plus 1, which equals the square root of 26. For number 10, we have to do our vector operations without having the coordinates or graph paper. So uh, let's start by duplicating vector A. 
So I'm just going to take my vector drawing tool and I'm going to draw a vector right over the top. All right, messed that up a little bit. Let me try that again. Uh, I'm just going to draw my vector right over the top of vector A like this. Uh, I'm going to let vector A be blue. So now I will be able to copy and paste copies of vector A like that um, anytime I want. Similarly, let's do vector B. So I'm going to use my vector drawing tool and I will draw a copy of vector B. Let's let vector B be red. Okay, so now I should be able to copy and paste extra copies of vector B. So everywhere you see a red vector, just know that that's going to be vector B. And if you see a blue vector, that's going to be vector A. Okay, so if I want to um, add and do vector A plus B. So here is my vector A. So I'm going to put that first. And then uh, here's vector B. And I will put those end to end like this. Now the resultant vector A plus B will stretch from the initial point of A to the terminal point of B. B. And I'm going to make my resultant vector green as I often do. Go ahead and label your diagram like this. All right, now we need to do vector A minus B. There are a couple ways we could do this, um, but I'm going to show you my favorite way, uh, which allows me to use vector A and B directly. So I'm just selecting them. Control C, Control V, uh, I've created duplicate copies of A and B. For this subtraction method, you want to put the vectors together starting from the same initial point, like this. The resultant vector will go from terminal point to terminal point, right across like this. Now the question is, which direction will it be? Uh, will the resultant vector A minus B go from vector A to vector B, or will it go from vector B to vector A? Now the truth is that it is the opposite of the way it's written here. If I want to do A minus B, I need to draw the resultant vector from vector B to vector A. So you want to do A minus B, draw it from B to A. It's reversed. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get my arrow drawing tool. And I will draw it from the terminal point of vector B to the terminal point of vector A. This is how you do a subtraction problem. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make this green and label this vector A minus B. All right, that's my favorite way to do it. There are others. Now, if I want to do negative 3 times vector A, um, let's snag a copy of vector A. So here's vector A. Control C, Control V. Now I've duplicated it. Now here is vector A. Now, negative 3. The negative means that I need the vector to be going in the opposite direction. Uh, I can achieve that by rotating this twice by 90 degrees. So I'm just uh, under the draw menu, choose rotate and rotate it 90 degrees twice. Now I'm going to change the color to purple to indicate that um, I no longer have vector A. This is the vector negative A. All right, this is now the vector negative A. Um, but I need negative 3A. So the vector negative 3A should be three times as long as this. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
copy this vector two more times. So if I put these end to end, then I'm guaranteed to have triple the length. Okay, so I'm going to end up with three times the length of the original vector A, and it's all going in the opposite direction because it's negative. All right, so you can see that this is um, what I'm looking for. Now I'm going to go ahead and draw my resultant vector as a single vector. I'm just using this to sort of measure it out. But when I draw my final answer, I'm just going to draw it from the beginning of the first vector till the end of the last vector. And as I often do, I'm going to go ahead and make my resultant green. Okay, and you know what, maybe just for good measure, I'm going to move it a little bit off so you can see it uh, separately. Okay, so this green vector is the resultant vector uh, that is negative 3a. Okay, that was fun. So now we're going to do 2b plus a graphically. All right, so 2b, that means I need two vector b's in a row. Okay, so I'm just going to reach over here and snag a vector b. Control C, Control V, I have duplicated it. So here is a vector b. I need to just drag this over. Okay, so this is a vector B. So I'm going to duplicate it again. Control C, Control V. Now I've got two of them. So this is going to be 2B. All right, because it's two vector Bs. Now I need to add vector A. So I'm going to have to go over here and snag a vector A. Control C, Control V. I've got a duplicate. So now I can just drag this over, okay, and uh, when you do your vector addition, you put these guys end to end. So here's my 2b plus a. So of course the resultant vector should extend from the initial point to the terminal point of all the vectors. All right, so this will be the vector 2b plus a. And I will, of course, color it green, like I do with all my resultant vectors. And go ahead and label your diagram like this. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. I hope it was helpful, and I will see you on the next video.